In this video, I'm gonna show you a number of things. I'm gonna show you how to get WSL version two up and running on a Windows 10 computer. In a previous video, which I've linked here and below, I showed you how to do that, but I showed you how to do that using the graphical user interface. So in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do that using PowerShell. Just allows us to do things very, very quickly, but I'm also gonna show you how to get an Ubuntu VM up and running on WSL, in this case, Ubuntu 20.04, and I'm gonna show you how to get a graphical user interface up and running on Ubuntu. I'm gonna show you how you can remote desktop to the Ubuntu VM running within WSL version two. Okay, let's get started. Now, as mentioned, I'm gonna show you multiple things in this video. First thing is installation of WSL version two. Then I'm gonna show you how to get an Ubuntu virtual machine up and running within WSL version two. Then I'm gonna show you how to set up the graphical user interface. Use this menu and the menu below to jump to a specific topic. So if you're not interested in, for instance, getting WSL version two up and running because you've already got it working, then jump to the relevant topic in this video. Now in this example, I'm doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. I'm controlling the laptop using VNC from my Mac, but I'm doing everything on this Windows 10 laptop. Okay, first thing, make sure that you've got the right version of Windows 10. You need at least version 2004. If you haven't got that version, go to Windows Update and make sure that you update your Windows computer to that release. Now, some people have had issues getting this release of Windows up and running on their computer. You may have to use a manual installation process to do that. Okay, so once you've got your computer updated, run PowerShell as an administrator. So I'm gonna click yes to run this as administrator. Here's PowerShell. First thing you need to do once you open PowerShell as administrator is to enable the Windows subsystem for Linux. I'm gonna simply copy this command from the Microsoft documentation, but I've put all the commands below this video, which will hopefully help you get this set up very quickly. I've added commands to set up WSL version two, but I've also added the commands to get the graphical user interface up and running on Ubuntu. So I'm gonna simply paste that into PowerShell. You can see that the feature has been enabled. Next step, and as you can see here, they mention that you need version 2004 is to enable the virtual machine platform. So I'm gonna copy that command from Microsoft and paste it in. Operation has completed successfully. We told that we need to restart the machine. So restart your computer. As you can see, Windows updates are being applied and the computer is being rebooted. Okay, once it reboots, log back in. You can check whether your features are enabled by going to turn Windows features on or off. Scrolling down here, I can see that the virtual machine platform is enabled as well as the Windows subsystem for Linux. That's how you enable it through the GUI if you prefer using the GUI. Okay, next step is to set the version to WSL version two. So PowerShell, copy this command to set the version to version two. Now notice WSL requires an update to its kernel component. You can use this URL to find out the details. So copying that URL, we need to download the latest WSL2 Linux kernel. So I'm gonna click on that link to download the software. This is only a small application, 13 meg in size. So I'll show that in folder, double click on the MSI, click run, and I'm told that this will update the Windows subsystem for Linux. Click next, click yes to allow it to make changes. That's now completed. Now that that's been done, I'll copy the command once again to set the version to version two. So that's been done now. If I type WSL-L-V, you can see that no Linux distributions have been installed. So I can install them from the Microsoft store. So back in the documentation, they basically tell us to do that. We can go to the Microsoft store. So I'll do that. Go to the Microsoft Store and search for Ubuntu. 
Now there are various releases of Ubuntu. I could run 18.04 LTS, I could run 20.04. I'm simply gonna take this version, which is actually gonna give me the latest release of Ubuntu at the time of this recording, it's 20.04. Now I've previously installed this, so I've got the install option. If you don't have that, click get and then click install. So I'm gonna click install, software is downloaded. It's about 430 meg. So that's now completed. And what I can do now is launch the virtual machine. I'm told that it's installing and may take a few minutes. I'm asked to create a default Unix account. This does not need to match my Windows username. I'm simply gonna use David, specify my password, retype my password. And as you can see, I've now got Ubuntu up and running on my Windows 10 computer. Back in PowerShell, using the command WSL-L-V shows me that I've got Ubuntu running. The WSL version is version two. So that's how you get an Ubuntu virtual machine. This is a lightweight virtual machine running within WSL version two on a Windows 10 computer. In my example here, I'm using Windows Home. I'm not using a professional version of Windows. This is Windows Home, running on a laptop with an i7 processor, eight gig of RAM. But I've essentially got Ubuntu up and running on this computer. LSB underscore release dash A shows me my version of Ubuntu. Now in other videos, which I've linked here and below, I show you how to use Windows Terminal. Windows Terminal makes this very easy. So as an example, I can select Ubuntu here. PWD shows me my home directory. LSB underscore release once again, shows me my release of Ubuntu 20.04. You don't have to use the Windows Terminal if you don't want to. You can just use the built-in terminal that you get with Windows. But in my example, I'm gonna use the Windows Terminal just because it's very nice, it has tabs, very nice interface. Okay, so now that we've got Ubuntu up and running, let's get a graphical user interface up and running on this Ubuntu virtual machine. Now in May, 2020, Microsoft announced that they will bring graphical user interfaces to WSL version two. At the time of this recording, that's still not available. It's probably scheduled for the later part of 2020. So in this example, I'm gonna show you how to get a graphical user interface up and running on Ubuntu so that you can RDP directly to your Ubuntu virtual machine running within WSL version two. This is a workaround at the moment while we wait for Microsoft to release their built-in RDP or remote desktop solution in WSL version two. The first thing to do is to do a sudo apt update and sudo apt upgrade. I'll put in my password. References are updated and the software is updated. Now you don't necessarily have to upgrade your virtual machine, it's just good practice, so that's what I'm doing here. Okay, that's done, I'll clear the screen. I'll now use sudo apt install xrdp to install RDP. I've once again listed all the commands below this video if you just wanna copy those rather than try and get them from the video. Okay, xrdp is installed, I'll clear the screen. Let's install a lightweight graphical user interface, so XFCE4. Now you have a choice. I'm gonna use GDM3 as my graphical user interface. Okay, that's completed. I'll clear the screen again. I'm gonna install additional software, so XFCE4 goodies. I'll clear the screen again. Now we're going to do some configuration of XRDP. So I'm gonna back up the XRDP configuration file so that I have a backup of it. You don't have to do this, but it's a good idea to back up stuff like this. So if you make a mistake, you can just restore your backup. What I'm gonna do is change the default port of 3389 to 3390. You don't have to do that once again, but I'm doing that so that I can use a different port number to the default. Make sure that there are no conflicts. I'm gonna increase the resolution by increasing the bits per pixel. So those two commands just allow the quality of the RDP session to be better. I'm basically RDPing to myself here locally. So 
makes sense to have good quality. I'm gonna save that to X session. And what I'm gonna do is use Nano, Simple Text Editor, to edit this XRDP startup script. Go right to the end. So just go right to the end and comment out these last two lines. So I'm gonna simply comment out those two lines and then I'm gonna add an additional two lines. So we're gonna start XFCE. Control X, save the file. And there you go, I've saved that file. And now that I've saved the file, I'm gonna start up XRDP. So the RDP server has now started. So now that that's been done, I can test my connection and I can use localhost port 3390 because that's the port we changed the RDP server to use. And if I click connect, I'm told that the identity of the server can't be verified. Do I wanna connect? Yes, I do. I've got an RDP session to my Ubuntu server. I'll log in with my username and password. If you get an error here, it's probably because you've used the wrong username and password. So I'm gonna click OK to log into my server. And there you go, I've RDP'd or opened a remote desktop to my Ubuntu computer. So just to prove the point, here is my Ubuntu server. So this is the CLI, LSB underscore release gives us that. IP address gives us that. This is the IP address of the server. In my RDP session, I'll click on Applications, Terminal Editor. I'll zoom in here. So just make this a bit bigger. LSB underscore release dash A shows me my release. IP address shows me that this is the same server. I'm working on the same server. Now the interface is different. I'm using a lightweight GUI interface here rather than the default. Notice what happens though when I try and open up a web browser, I get an error. So what I'm gonna do is type sudo apt install Firefox so that I have Firefox as my default browser. So I'm now installing Firefox on the Ubuntu virtual machine running within WSL version two, running within my Windows 10 computer. Okay, so that's done. I'll click on this icon again, and notice I have Firefox running on my Ubuntu VM running within WSL version two. I'll type date today. Notice there's the date. So there you go. I'm able to connect to the internet using a web browser installed within Ubuntu within WSL version two on my Windows 10 computer. Now I'll close this because I'm sure people are gonna ask me this question. You don't have to use localhost. You could go to 24.105.187 like this. This is using a NATed address. So I'm able to connect to the virtual machine by IP address. Now that's how you get a graphical user interface up and running on Ubuntu. Have a look at the links below this video. I found a really good article and I've linked to that below this video that really helped me set this up. Now, if you enjoy this video, please consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Please like this video and please click on the bell to get notifications. I'm David Bombal. I wanna wish you all the very best.